Hello everyone, um, this is uh, Dr. Uh, Khan uh, from Bloomfield House, Michigan, Executive Plastic Surgery. Um, I want to go ahead and invite everyone to another Facebook Live. This is a, another uh, Facebook Live, but very special Facebook Live. We have a guest from Europe, from Germany. Uh, she uh, and I uh, basically talked just yesterday at around 6 p.m. And this is when I said, you know, instead of the question answer session, why do I not invite my guest onto Facebook Live so that we can hear for her in regards to her experience? And there is no other better person who can share this than any of my patients. And certainly, um, Julia, she's here uh, from Germany. Now, we will hear from her directly. Remember, this is a movement by the ladies, for the ladies. My job here is to give information. This is not my opinion, but these are hard facts that we're gonna look at. We're gonna see where and how medical literature slash surgical and scientific literature is basically giving us that information so that when we put the two and two together, ultimately when we listen to the patients, we get all the answers because the patients are hurting and we're gonna hear it from Julia. So please, thank you very much for thank coming you, on. Yep. So thank you very much for coming on. And if you could please tell us about yourself, uh, where are you from and uh, please share your journey. How did it all start? Yeah. Well, my name is Julia, I'm 36 years old. Um, I'm from Germany, as you already said. And I'm a mother of two. And well, after a big weight loss journey, I um, decided to get breast implants in the year 2020. Um, they were rather big, so I was talked into implants by mentor, uh, high textured implants, silicone filled, like the gummy bear texture, so cohesive too. And I had um, 550 and 500 cc implants. So yeah, the symptoms started fairly like right away, but I like, your, your your augmentation was done in uh, 2020, right? So just four years ago, right? So my symptoms started right away. I had uh, some like changes, like physical changes and men mental changes, like concentration problems, and they would uh, progress. And then uh, 2022, which was only two years after uh, putting them in, I had such severe pains all over my body, um, nerve pain. I had tremor attacks. I had muscle weakness to the point I had to use a walker. Um, like I was going to the doctors, right? Like, like. What doctors did you see? Well, I, I saw. PCP, I saw um, neurologists, I, neurolo neurologists, neurologists, yeah, sorry, I saw endocrinologists, um, I saw like really, I, I went to my female doctor uh, because I had like ongoing menstruation for like five months, so no one could like rule out what was wrong with me. Now, what did the endocrinologist do? What did the neurologist do? What tests did they Well, run? they did some tests on my nerves. They saw that my reflexes were shut down. They um, also saw that my nerve signals were depleted already, but they couldn't figure out, so what was the problem? So they sent me into an MRI. They did an MRI on me, um, showing I had 20 brain lesions. So they were all inflamed. So the MRI showed 20 um, inflammation lesions in my brain already. So they assumed me having probably MS. Mm -hmm. So I had a treatment done with a lot of steroid uh, infusions, like IV treatments. Did they diagnose you with MS? No, they didn't. So MS, multiple sclerosis, they did not, but no. they wanted to treat? They wanted to treat me like I had MS. So I had like all of those IV treatments done and they made me worse. Mm -hmm. So they did not help you? No. And then it got so bad to the point I couldn't like see anymore properly. I still had those uh, attacks of tremors. I had breathing issues very bad. And some days like I couldn't like even 
make one step anymore and yeah my memory was lacking I was mm, sometimes not able to finish to finish a whole sentence because my brain wouldn't process like mm. so you were hurt for someone back then uh, four years ago you were 32 yeah so you had gone to the endocrinologist your primary care doctor your OBGYN doctor and mm -hmm. um, so all the doctors their tests essentially yielded nothing yeah, inconclusive yeah, nothing, right. okay then what happened well then my mom told me that she saw on the internet something like breast implant illness um, basically that saved my life um, she insisted on like taking them out properly so that what she did uh, we contacted like uh, the several different uh, surgeons this is back in germany back in germany and we paid for what was called like a proper on block because my mom knew that my condition has to be treated properly by a by a specialist like like a special um kind of um, explantation right so it's not only about like the implant itself, it would be like uh, also the scar tissue and all of that implant tissue and also like the biofilm that created around the implant site, which is rather big if you consider having a textured implant. So the textured implant has a very, very uh, wide surface. Like if you imagine like in, inside of your intestines, like there is a surface like very very big right mm -hmm. so the textured implant gives you a lot of more like surface to interact with your body and with your immune system right so the tech if i may jump in the textured implants essentially are rough they have an irregular not smooth contour at the surface now you had 550 cc implant on the right that in itself is a very large volume and 500 cc's on the left so if you can imagine holding that implant, so that in itself, plus the textured nature, we know the textured implants cause a lot more inflammation, i.e. reactivity by the body, because it allows for the fibrosis, i.e. scarring to occur in and around and prevents the implant from quote, moving about because it is literally held in nice and tight. We know um, that the textured implants are a lot more involved in the inflammation they're associated more so than the smooth implants than the textured implants so textured implants are more associated with the bial cl than the smooth implants now if i may if i use the verbiage that we have from the mentor advertisement itself this is Breast implants have been associated with the development of a cancer of the immune system called breast implant associated anaplastic large cell lymphoma, BIALCL, period. This cancer occurs more commonly in patients with textured breast implants than smooth implants, comma, although rates are not well defined, period. Some patients have died from BIALCL. Now, I just want to go ahead and highlight because this is important. Number one, this is BIAALCL breast implant associated anaplastic large cell lymphoma. This means that had the implant not been there, the BIAALCL would not have formed, meaning this lymphoma is directly associated with the breast implants. The second thing is, remember, this is very rare of rare. Uh, to date on earth so far in the medical literature there's been only 1233 cases plus minus in the many many countries all over the world that have reported the BIALCL so it is very much underreported uh, uh, but the numbers are very very low now the Society of Plastic Surgery and the FDA and any medical uh, oncologist will acknowledge the fact that these numbers are relatively low because not everyone is being tested for the BILCL and that even when they do test, the CD30 stain is not being done because that is very specific to the BILCL. So the fact here, number one, is if you look at the wording here, and if I may highlight, quote, the, this cancer occurs more commonly in patients with textured breast implants than smooth. So that means the textured implants, remember they've been banned in France and then in the US. 
but the smooth implants are also implicated to a lesser extent and we do not know to what extent. Now, I don't want my patients or anyone to lose sleep over the fact that they may have lymphoma, but they need to be aware. And this is precisely why the FDA put out the warning, the black box warning. And this is precisely why the FDA even put out the warning with BIA SCC, which is the Breast Implant Associated Squamous Cell Cancer. Now we know as doctors, physicians, there are many other code entities, lymphomas, cancers that are associated, but we do not know to what capacity. And this is where more research needs to be done. And there is a general consensus understanding that the numbers are higher than what has been reported because not everyone is removing capsules. And number two, not everyone is testing them once they're removed in the manner that we do here at Executive Plastic Surgery. So the textured nature, and we know grossly anecdotally from my experience, the patients with textured implants certainly have a lot more inflammation than those patients with saline implants and silicone implants. Uh, and certainly there are many patients that I've done with saline implants where there's been a lot of inflammation, but textured implants in general, more reactivity, more reactionary tissue than uh, the, the, the smooth uh, or the smooth silicone, the smooth saline implants. So please go ahead and yeah. so you had So then what happened, we paid for it, you know, we had a contract done um, of having this on block procedure. Um, uh, yeah, and then I had the surgery and uh, well... This was in 2022. This was in 2022, right? So I had the surgery done and um, I, it took me like two, uh, two to three weeks to uh, feel like a little bit better. I was okay for like I think three weeks and then like I got really bad again. So. Sure. Now I want to highlight, now remember there is no scientific study from my experience where I only remove saline implants, silicone implants, ruptured implants and residual capsules from my experience of having talked to so many ladies and studying their process I have noticed and this is, remember, not a scientific study. I have noticed that the patients who explant, they have a period of time, be it 10 days, three weeks, two months, where they feel like where they have improved from the silicon toxicity of having explanted, but then they eventually go down to 50%, 75% of those symptoms come back as if they never got a true explant. So anecdotally, there is a quote, a honeymoon period, if you will, or a period or transition of time where the patient certainly does benefit. And then the symptoms recur, some half, some 75%, some as if they never even got an explant, as if they had implants in place. So please Yeah, forget. so then I um, got worse again. I tried to push through my daily life. It was really, really hard. And then at uh, some point, like I, I had connected with uh, different um, ladies. So at some point it was clear that something was wrong because I was like eating very healthy. I had like nothing I, I, I did to prevent my body from recovering, right? So yeah, and then I looked for uh, surgeons in Europe, like um, they could probably um, remove residual capsules. So I made an appointment with a female doctor in Germany doing an ultrasound on my breast and telling me, well, yeah, the capsules are still in. This was like one and a half years after my first explant. So yeah, and then I decided to have uh, this second surgery and it was 20K. Wow, okay. So this is, you had your surgery in February of 2024, just yeah. uh, basically right. five months That's ago. That's right. Yeah, and I had like, you know, a conversation with her, like saying, okay, let's, uh, I, I need some videos, I need some pictures, like to make sure everything was out and also like for my um, private documents, right, documentation. Well, and then um, I had the surgery done and 
I didn't feel any better. I can remember after the surgery, I was like in a comatose state for like three days again. So um, yeah, it, it just like stirred up a reaction again and I got worse and I never no, you, recovered. You, you had surgery done as an outpatient uh, in February, meaning you were discharged from the same day from the surgery? Uh, I think two days later. Two days yeah. you were admitted. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I just want to go ahead and mention, you know, from my experience, and again, this is where if you were to go and assess and ask a plastic surgeon what is the goal of the surgery, majority of the plastic surgeons will say, well, remove the implant and remove the capsule. From my experience, and again, this is me putting the two and two together, for my training as a biochemist in undergrad uh, from UT Austin, and from my analysis and experience of reading and talking to the patients. And certainly, as we see more and more literature, look, we have, and we have put this uh, publication, this was uh, in ePlasty uh, in March of 2022. It says, and I'm gonna read, quote, verbatim, breast implant illness, colon, treatment using total capsulectomy and implant removal. So this is a surgeon, Dr. Stefan Metzinger, who basically looked at 200 patients between 2016 and 2020. And he basically said that he was going to remove the implant and also do what is a total capsulectomy. So these are his words, his publication, anyone can read it and we have it on our Facebook page and also on the YouTube. And I want everyone to read it because this is hard evidence. Now remember, this is a very good study. It's 200 patients, it has its limitations. But then what they mention, the, the doctor mentions here, he reports, of patients with the presentation of BII, 96% reported improved or complete resolution of their symptoms after implant removal and total capsulectomy. So this is huge. And then it says in conclusion, our study shows implant removal with capsulectomy drastically improves breast implant illness symptoms. Further large prospective cohort studies are needed to better understand this entity. So just like this doctor and the many others, just go on f social media, PubMed, which is publication medica uh, pu uh, medical journals, uh, PubMed, or on Google, you type in the word total capsulectomy or implant removal explant, you will see the word total capsulectomy simultaneously mentioned with the word explant. So it is important. And the medical community, surgical community, and more importantly, the doctors are starting to realize one after another in those patients where the implant was removed only and the capsules were left behind that the patients do not benefit from an explant. And it is important, the take home message is this, that the capsule must be removed. Otherwise, we end up yeah. in your state. Now, I do not know from my experience how many ladies who had an incomplete capsule removal benefited completely. How many of those ladies where they had a partial capsule removal where they improved 70% and the ladies felt well, this is the improvement that I was waiting for and they don't realize that 30% more improvement or 20% more improvement could have happened had the total capsule been removed. Now we have two proofs, if you will. The first proof is the pathology of the capsule because once the pathologist looks at the capsule and says chronic inflammation, foreign body reaction, histiocytic reaction, giant cell reaction, histiocytic, Histiocytic reaction, macrophages, foamy macrophages, that in itself are uh, non polarizable uh, material consistent with breast implant particles. So, that in itself is proof that that capsule harbored within it the heavy metals, the badness, the toxicity. So, once the implants are removed, that silica that lingers behind will continue to hurt and task and burden the patient with the symptoms of breast implant illness. Not to the same extent as when she had the implant, but certainly to the extent where it was enough to drive your immune system. Because yeah. you would love to go back to your surgery yeah. after your first surgery in 2022 mm -hmm. and where you had that 
end block, supposedly yeah. end block, and that you had complete removal of the capsule. Why would you have to and want to pay another set of money, let alone that, but more importantly, the time away from family, right. the pain of the surgery, and the anxiety of the surgery, because yeah. remember, surgery is a big deal. And the whole purpose and goal here is to remove the capsule plus the implant plus the inflamed tissue around. Yeah. Remember, you have the spillage into the capsule, but remember the periphery of tissue around, that in itself also hurts and compromises yeah. the patient's symptoms. So that also needs to be removed. Well, yeah, I had a lot of pain. Like, uh, you know, I had that second surgery done in February. As I already mentioned, I never fully recovered. Um, it got worse to the point when I drove the car over a bumpy street. I got so much pain in my breast still. So um, I felt like something really bothering me. Like I felt the inflammation like so bad. Um, I couldn't do anything with my hands and everyone out there knows um, breast muscles. They're like active in fairly like most of our movements through the whole day. So I was really struggling and I thought, my, I thought to myself, why am I so struggling? So I ordered all the pictures and the reports from that second doctor. Well, yeah, and uh, I never got any. So that was me being like very suspicious about the whole situation. Yeah, and then I, I decided uh, we made some investigations with a lot of like um, ladies from the group experience all the same things like uh, yeah having to go to another surgery like having to have exploratory surgery right a third one yeah <clears throat> and well we made some investigation and we found out well probably my capsules are not completely removed so what led you to that well on the first hand like on the first hand i had the pain like i could really localize my pain so i really felt where most of that capsule must have like stuck to um secondary um i had a pathology report so i would go in with my friend cecily we um did some like uh, conversation and i uh, had a pathology report with measurements so we we took a piece of paper, like drawing them right, as a right, measurement, right. like holding it onto my like. What were the measurements? It was like, like that. So a small area. Yeah. So the point here is a 550 cc implant. If you can imagine the capsule around it, is going to be enough of enough of a volume or an area, so that the capsules or whatever was removed was not consistent with the volume of the implant. Yeah. True. So. Yeah, and then Dr. Khan, he went in um, the day before yesterday. 48 hours ago. Right. Not even that much. Yeah. 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 And 48 hours ago, you were getting ready for surgery. That's true. Yes, yeah. So. And, you know, I, I, I don't know what I expected. I, I didn't expect like anything, but, you know, what I saw when I saw those pictures. It was so shocking to me and my family because we really thought, oh my gosh, like, it was all really that huge, huge um, amount of inflamed tissue still inside of my chest. So it made us questioning um, what are those doctors like thinking? Like it, it won't hurt my body anymore. Like it was all red and inflamed, right? Sure. Now let me go ahead and fill in. There's a lot to talk about now. Remember, the surgeons are hardworking professional. This is new. This is something where, believe it or not, I have plastic surgery societies, other plastic surgeons, my colleagues, they question the fact that you're doing what is a very tedious surgery, very expensive surgery. Certainly, you know, the four, five, six hours that it takes, it is a lot harder to remove residual capsules because number one, you not only have had the surgery from 22, 24, plus there's still inflammation from the uh, February 2024 surgery, plus there is that residual inflammation that's present from the implant itself that certainly adds to the intensity of the surgery. There is no literature that defines. So let me just discuss with you, just this morning I talked to a lady from Florida, 76 year old lady, she has implants from 1985. And she told me she went to her plastic surgeon in Florida who's still practicing, interestingly, 
uh, a year ago and she was told by her plastic surgeon, don't worry about it, you are fine, live happily ever after with the implants. Now one thing is for sure, let's go ahead and look at another hard evidence. Again, this is not my opinion and I'm, I dare not fear or cause fear in my patients. I'm just reading to you what is in the literature. This is informed consent. The patients make the decision. The patients, I tell the patients, you're the boss, you decide. My job is to convey the message and for you to make an informed decision to sign up for a surgery that for my gut, if I feel that you're not gonna benefit, I'm not gonna offer. Like one of the patients, she said, well, I had the implants removed and the ultrasound shows that there is residual capsule on the left side only and some fluid, the right side is fine, it doesn't bother me, I can move my arm around, I just want you to operate on the left. I say I'm not gonna do that, so I won't necessarily listen to my patients. I offer them from what I know with confidence, and if I'm ever not sure, I say I choose to not operate. So having said this, so this patient, the 76 year old who had implants from 1985 and who talked to her plastic surgeon who put in implants, um, a year ago she sought that plastic surgeon out in regards to what to do. Her plastic surgeon said, leave them alone, you're fine. Well, if you look at the first line in the warning, it says, breast implants are not considered lifetime devices, period. The longer people have them, comma, the greater the chances are that they will develop complications, some, some of which will require more surgery. Now remember, the implants, 10 to 15 years is how long they last, some sooner, Look, we have a patient uh, very soon thereafter, uh, you know, it started hurting um, uh, uh, my patient, um, and then she sought removal, um, you know, two years later, eventually having made the decision to um, explant. Another lady I took care of, she was the 22 year old. She had just gotten implants a few weeks ago and her symptoms came on that fast to the point where she had tingling numbness in the arms and legs and weight loss and I did a Facebook Live with her a couple of years ago so you can hear her own words. And this, the, 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 the goal here is that implant that she has from 1985 certainly needs to be removed. It's causing, they're not meant to be in the body forever as you heard. And a ruptured implant, it's not safe or healthy to be in the body. Number two, and it needs to be removed in a very systematic way such that none of that silicon spills into the chest because once that happens, that silica that embeds within the soft tissues will continue to hurt and linger around and cause the patient that silicon toxicity, silicon mastitis, silicon granuloma, and that reactionary tissue. We know of the many patients who have what are silent ruptures. That means if you examine them, they will have an unremarkable exam, a normal exam, and lo and behold, we find out that the implant was indeed ruptured. And this is precisely why, you know, if you look at, again, Mentor, they write down the quote, MRI screenings are recommended three years after initial implant surgery and then every two years after to detect silent rupture. And this tells you, now if you look at the FDA uh, recommendation, they want you to get an ultrasound, but this is what the manufacturer is telling you to get an MRI. So the point here is the capsules and them and cells plus the inflamed tissue harbors the silicon and the toxicity that needs to be removed. Otherwise, those symptoms will continue to linger on. Now, one thing that I tell my patients, you know, there's uh, five criteria that I look at that kind of gives you that confidence that your surgeon did the right, complete job. Number one, you want to have pictures and videos. Now, what you said when you saw the pictures and videos that I sent you, clearly my job here is to be completely transparent and say, look, this is what your chest looks like as soon as I enter. This is what it looks like when I am 10, 15 minutes into the case, because you cannot film the whole operation because it literally, uh, I'm dissecting and my hands are right in the, uh, the surgical field. This is me having removed half and this is me having removed complete and this is the chest showing complete removal of the capsule. And that video of the chest plus the pictures of the chest is ultimate attestation to the fact that the whole capsule was removed and that only good healthy viable tissue remains behind. Number two, the length of the incision should be 
nice and generous for someone who had a 550cc implant on the right and left. We know that the capsule goes all the way up two finger breadths below the clavicle and sometimes even down below the crease, which was present in your case. So if a surgeon has a two centimeter, three centimeter incision or another patient had an end block done from the nipple areola complex, that is impossible because you have to be able to dissect all the way medially, all the way lateral and up and down in order to remove the whole capsule, which is plastered, super glued to the rib, which is indeed what is the hardest part of the case. Number three, the length of time. You cannot do the surgery in an hour and a half or two hours. The surgery in itself is a lot harder than removing implant and capsule because you have something hard. This is residual capsule. Remember, I can tell that the surgeon made an attempt in the 22 operation to remove the capsule. The surgeon indeed did make an attempt in 2024 to remove that capsule, the residual capsule. And now it was the third time for me to completely remove the whole capsule off of the rib, which includes removing the perichondrium, which is the layer directly on top of the cartilage, layered directly on top of the rib, which is the periosteum, the fascia of the intercostal muscle, the fascia of the pectoralis minor, the inferior portion of the pectoralis uh, major, the lower part, um, and then the fascia of the pectoralis minor superior. So all of that needs to be re uh, removed and it takes time. You cannot fast forward this process. It, it's a very tedious, meticulous surgery. And I will tell you, not every surgeon can do it because you have to have that mindset. Number four, the surgeon preferably should not be putting in implants. It takes a lot of effort and guts. And to make that financial commitment, remember in the time that I did your explant, I easily could have done three or four augmentations. augmentations between the two operating rooms easily, which is done routinely. One of my friends called me up and uh, he's a plastic surgeon. He said he did eight of these in a day uh, between the three operating rooms uh, that he had. And again, I find it, it's like a factory and I, it is wrong. Uh, I interviewed another plastic surgeon. He said he did 10 minutes, 10 minutes, and he would be done 45 minutes, start to finish. And you can imagine how fast the removal on average takes me four hours. And I'll tell you, if you ask my patients, two thirds of them are waiting over the time that I've allocated to them. Uh, simply because you never know what's gonna happen when I go inside, how involved it's gonna be. Uh, if it's ruptured or not, in your case, obviously the residual capsules, the capsules in, in itself extended superiorly lower, so that is the length of time. So does the surgeon should not and cannot be augmenting and at the same time saying that the breast implant unless exists and the total capsule needs to be removed. I talked to a lady from South Dakota a long time ago and within three minutes she made up her mind that she was gonna come and get the explant with me and she said to me, I am committed and I said no it's just been three minutes I wanted to ask me more questions and she was a very smart lady young uh, mom of five kids and she said well number one you're showing me the videos and the pictures of not only the chest but also cutting open off the capsules on the table and more importantly you're not putting in implants that in itself reaffirms and authenticates and as you will see when I started off uh, with the explantation, I could never imagine in my wildest dreams that this is what my practice would be. I only put in one set of implants that was on a, a mastectomy patient uh, uh, in order to get the board certification, but I chose very early on that this is not going to be a part of my career. And the point here is I do no harm. And as you will see, if you look at the good versus the bad, that the implants cause, ultimately at the end of the day, and not only you, but the many other ladies will attest to the fact it's not worth it. And I say to you, Never. do no harm and don't take any chances, especially with your life. Now, when the system tells you these are safe, my goal today is to educate the ladies who do not know. Your mom educated yeah. you. You're educating the many other ladies who do not know that you know, these warnings are real and that they're hurting and that there is relief. Now, the other thing is, the, the fifth thing is very important uh, that authenticates, gives you the confidence that your surgeon has a social media authentication slash confirmation attestation because 
you are validating me. The patient before you, who you talked to, you mentioned, yeah. she has already gone. She is attesting and she is confirming that what I do is real. Because yeah. over time, I will get tested and tried by my patients, by the system. Another patient came to me and she ended up getting a lift from another surgeon. And her surgeon just mentioned the idea, well, there potentially could be capsules that were left behind. And I told the patient, please come to my clinic. Did I not send you the pictures and the videos that you had of me showing your rib cage minus the periosteum and perichondrium? Did you not see that? Did I not give it to you in writing? Am I not putting in uh, the implants? And she said, that is true. And it was unfortunately that suspicion that it is human nature. And she realized this was uh, the layer of how the scar tissue settles, um, that how she had healed. And clearly this was not the capsule. And this is the ultimate bond that I have with the patients. Because tomorrow I could very well end up doing augmentations and it is my right to do that. Yeah. It's my training to do that. But I say to myself, to you and to all the listeners, these five criteria are very important for you to know and get that confirmation. So if you look at that surgeon, with all due respect, man, I do not want to know her name or his name. Were those five pictures, length of time, length of the incision, not putting in implants and on a social media presence that she does or he does residual capsules. That gives you, because in your case, look, you're minus two surgeries yeah. and this third one, which is not, meaning it is expensive for you to fly from Europe and to undergo, live in a hotel and undergo. And I will tell you, I have no financial disclosures. I have no commitment to anyone, no Facebook uh, feedbacks or financial kickbacks, Facebook owner kickbacks. I have only one interest, which is to serve you. And I will tell you, there is a genuine 100% bond that you had even before you came. That lady that I talked to this morning, the 76 year old, she bought her day without even talking to me. She bought her surgery. So I felt, let me talk to her first. Because look, yesterday she bought her day. I should at least make the phone call to her. And she has seen me. She has talked to, I'm sure, the other patients, which I find is the most important part of this process the initially you will be overwhelmed by this information but i will say to you one step at a time join the facebook page talk to the patients this feedback that you're giving is priceless so that you are and sorry to be blunt we're in the worst case scenario yeah you already had an x plan in 22 yes what is supposedly the end block, and then a second residual capsule activity, and now a third yeah. surgery, and hopefully this last surgery you're gonna ever have. And you have that peace and contentment of your uh, surgery because you have the videos and the pictures yeah. to show you, and there is no other financial commitment except that you are there, uh, and the relief that you have, and when you go back to your family, your kids, yeah. Uh, to your life back in Germany, you have that peace of mind and the tranquility that all of it was removed. Now, let me ask you this. How was your surgical experience? Well, Meaning as far as the yeah. anesthesia, let me ask you specifically. The anesthesia, oh, it went very, very well. Uh, there is something called twilight anesthesia done here. I didn't know it like before. Um, it was very smooth, so all went very smooth. And what I really enjoyed that I uh, didn't get like a two, mm -hmm. so I I uh, breathe like I took a breath myself still. You could see in the videos you could you were breathing on your own, just like you would sleep at night. I was snoring. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah, I did not want to. Sleep. Yeah. So this is where you don't have the paralysis um, and you are able to breathe propofol fentanyl verset and it's a very efficient practical um, as you can see you were kind of in the breathing phase and I had to operate in a very tactful way such that I would be able to synchronize my surgery with yours and I can I have done it very safely yeah. the other option is what majority of the other surgeons do and it's still done very safely in kids to adults where you paralyze the body and then you have a breathing tube, essentially the ventilator breathing for the patient. Um, 
now you can have ventilator related issues. You can get a clot because you're paralyzed. You're not have the tone in your muscles. Remember that's still very, very, very safe. Uh, but this is more practical, safer. And if I want the surgery, I tell every plastic surgeon I want every patient should be getting the surgery and can be done very safely. Now, another thing I want to mention here is we all are learning. No one taught me how to do the surgery. This is where you put the two and two together and you say, you know what, from my analysis and hopefully the many other plastic surgeons who are listening and learning, I can say with confirmation, we have 20 patients in a similar situation that we pull together and there is another group that's evaluating and seeing ideally there needs to be a whole IRB study that looks at the patients talks to them before or it's a prospective cohort trial so that we can say I wish I didn't have to do that capsule but that is what I am seeing what the literature is showing as well that needs to be done there are many surgeons if you get a gallbladder out in California in Germany it's done in the same way when you take it remove an implant many surgeons have their own ways they're always putting drains and they're always doing it from my experience from my analysis and from my feedback directly, and I'm very much hands-on, I find in my practice that the entire implant capsule removal plus inflamed tissue removal is key. And that the seven things that I do, which is part of the con procedure, number one, I do not want to do a lift at the same time because majority of the patients do not need the lift. There are some patients who will benefit from a lift. Last week at this time on a Thursday, exactly a week ago, I was doing a lift on a patient and I offered it to the patient because she would benefit from a lift. So there is this one uh, group of patients and a good number where I do what is a pseudo lift. I remove a horizontal um, a piece of tissue that allows for a 2D vector where the breast tissue is essentially lifted up with the internal sutures. And I offer it exclusively to all the patients. Before I would charge extra, but then now I incorporated it in my um, explantations because I find that the patient certainly would benefit from it given the large amount of implants that have displaced the tissue outward so I offer it which is very different from what the other uh, patients are going to experience where they all get that same lift up and down cut around the nipple areola I don't like that again this is my personal opinion this is where I want the patients to do their homework and they get their feedback I don't want like the cutting around the nipple areola and down you have put a scar in the center of the chest on a young lady uh, pins and needle sensation you have sometimes some ladies are not able to breastfeed for example that uh, or now they have internal scars or masses that they feel that might be suture fat necrosis or scar tissue and their self monthly breast exam might be altered so this is the con procedure or I will offer a lift to those select patients where I find they would benefit from uh, the lift. And that is where the patient hopefully needs that one and only surgery. If a patient has a ruptured implant and there is a lot of inflammation, it's angry, red, irritated, you don't want to be doing too much surgery on that patient. If the patient has history of cancer, you want to get her off the table in six hours because the longer you have someone on the table, the risk for clot goes up, infection, DVT, among others. Just so that you know, if I want to mention, every patient of mine gets this uh, SCD boots, which are the sequential compression devices, along with the heparin sub -Q, which is DVT prophylaxis, and plus the twilight, certainly, the same day out of bed to cheer, and then the following day walking. Uh, Cicely was mentioning that you were walking, and I said, I'm happy to hear that she's walking. So this is the DVT program. So the first thing is that lift, and I'll expand on that in another video. Number two, no need for drains. I have not used drains in my many patients with the ruptured implants, large implants, because I remove all the inflamed tissue, the capsule, and the blood loss in well over 99.5% of my patients is less than five cc's. Number three, I return the implants to the patient. Uh, so that the patients have a mental psychological closure, that the implants were removed, they were not ruptured, if there was saline. Uh, we have a lot of doctors poking the implants, rupturing them, and then two weeks later removing them under local, which is wrong. Number four, high definition pictures, videos of the chest while showing complete removal. So this is a must. You have to have high definition pictures, videos that are given to you by your surgeon for complete transparency 
if you get your gallbladder out, who cares? You never saw it, you never missed it. In this case, you want to see that the entire capsule was removed, inflamed tissue was removed, and that you don't have that burnt left behind. Number five, twilight sedation, deep sedation, the one that you mentioned. Number six, all patients get the same surgery, which basically means that if you are that 76 year old, she's going to get the same surgery that you got so that the there is no compromise in the capsule being left behind and so this is where uh, the the way i have been doing it consistently and no matter how and what length of time it takes if it's been the fastest one i did was the nba player's wife and uh, that's a video on youtube to the longest one which is almost six and a half hours of an explant just simply because it was a very inflamed, ruptured implant, and this is how long it uh, took for me to do in the surgery. The, uh, you know, many patients come to me and they say, well, here's another surgeon who will offer the surgery for a fraction of the price you're offering. I will tell you, no two surgeons are the same when it comes to the explant. No two thought processes are the same. No two surgical techniques are the same. I wish I could tell you that how many patients have approached me and say you undercharge for the amount of time and effort that I put in. And I will say that is very true. For me, I want to make it reasonable. I want to make it very practical for the patients given the time and effort between the facility, between the staff that I have, between the certifications and the equipment and the quality of care given my time, literally that I myself directly involved. So this is very important. I have talked to many patients who said, I talked to the medical assistant, I talked to the secretary, I talked to the nurse, I talked to the PA, the nurse practitioner, but they never talked to the surgeon. Your commitment, your bond, your confidence is in the surgeon who is taking his time to talk to you, not because he's looking for patients, but because he wants to give you that confidence that your surgery is gonna be done right. And number two, that you have that medical legal documentation that you mentioned very clearly, that contract where the total capsulectomy is going to be done, 100% total. You know, they did not mention breast implant owners treatment using partial or capsulectomy, total capsulectomy. You want to get the word total capsulectomy, preferably an envelope or total capsulectomy so that you have that medical slash legal bond and you did everything you did your research you're yeah. very well rounded you are very meticulous well, in you your know i think i think the, the the main cause of all this may be that the doctors still think that the capsule was built from the body so it's part of the body right yes, yes so yes. but what happens is that the capsule like it was built by the body as a reaction to the foreign object um, which means that all of the particles from the from the foreign object they soak into that capsule. So what happens in breast implant illness is that the body rejects this foreign object. So um, we assume that the foreign body rejection just lingers on as long as this capsular tissue is still inside of your chest. Right. No, very well said. That was a very important point that you mentioned. The reaction is directly with that capsule. Anytime you have any foreign body in the human, be it a pacemaker or a med port or a hip implant, you know, that stainless steel or titanium. But when you have the implants, that capsule forms. And remember, you have seen how many times this gummy bear that you mentioned earlier, if you cut a fresh implant with a knife, it's gonna cut and just like the gummy bears you eat with your ice cream or the kids eat, it's not going to spill. That's true. But you let it incubate at 98.5 degrees and you go through the repetitive trauma of everyday use, let alone all the athletic uh, you know, actions that the patients do, plus the hurt and the trauma. Uh, you, you will see that over time this will disintegrate. And like you have seen the many patients where these are the post-2007, the gummy bear, they literally melt like honey. We know that the, the implants, they interact with our bodies. So they, um, they gel bleed from day one. Uh, there is a professor in the Netherlands, he's very famous doing studies on that. Please mention his name. Yeah, Henry Dijkman. Yes. Yeah, he's a, re, re, 
uh, he's, he does a lot of stuff for us so we're really thankful for his studies and what he did you know he gave like uh, he did some some research he gave um, genetical like there were some animals genetically identical with our genes and he gave the silicone to them and they became immobile because the silicone is so toxic to the immune system and to the nerves that uh, they just got so stressed and they couldn't like move anymore so basically this is what what happens to us as well right so yeah i think um you know i you know i will say two things my patients that have all come to me especially from far away they are so well read they have done their research i say you have a phd in vegetable plant illness personally gone through it, you have read through it. You know, I will tell you, I learned from Dr. Henry Dykeman. There are a lot more studies now. There are so many things that are way over my head. I do not know what is reality, but what is reality is you sitting here yeah. and you, and along with the many other ladies attesting to the fact, just like this doctor who published that total capsule removal is key, along with that inflamed tissue, and that all of it is tested. So the, the two other things, if I may mention, part of the con procedure, I send the capsules off to pathology to make sure it's not the BIL, CL, CD30 analysis must be done, rule out pathology, rule out breast cancer. And the next thing is that cultures are done for aerobic, anaerobic, and fungal on all my patients, even you, you don't have insurance. And I want your tissue that was removed, the capsular tissue, inflamed tissue to be processed so that we know with certainty yeah. that it was not the BALCL and it was not malignant you know, and this is the peace of mind. That's the next thing, you know, like I'm a mother of two and you can develop the cancer of the capsule like anytime if the capsule stays inside of your body so it's still inside, right? It still reacts, so um, yeah, it's just like I think kind of brutal, like leaving it in, in inside of the body, like uh, probably someday causing that cancer, right? So this is again very important. What you mentioned, there is a study out uh, that basically looked at a patient. She had implants removed, capsule was left behind. Four years later, the patient ended up getting the BIALCL, which again attests to the fact that the capsules have in it. Now, how many of these cases are out there real? There are many surgeons who will say, the textbook answer is this. If you remove the implant and you find the capsule looks bad, then remove the capsule. If it's BIALCL, then you remove the capsule and it is mandatory, required. It's malpractice to leave that capsule behind if a patient has BILCL. And the operation of choice in a patient who has BILCL is complete removal of the entire implant and the entire capsule. Well, you don't want to find out after. I talked to uh, another uh, lady, she's, uh, uh, you know, specifically Tracy Gary. She told me about a patient who had an explant done, afterwards developed a seroma, and then, lo and behold, a few, uh, uh, sometime after, it turns out they did analysis on why this happened, and it turned out she had uh, the BILCL, and now the patient has to go back, and now it should have been done right to begin with to at least rule out the BILCL, which is underreported, and number two, you, she now is going to undergo what is a second surgery to removing what is that BILCL associated capsular tissue which must be removed. And the point here is what I'm in my practice proposing, remove the whole capsule so you don't have to suffer. And that very rare, rare situation that if it's lymphoma, you have the peace of mind yeah. that there's not going to be a surprise yeah. four or five years later. Yes, the surgery is hard. Yes, the surgery is tedious and meticulous. I want to call it dangerous because it's outpatient surgery. In May of 2023, I presented my 1,000 explants that I have done in the manner that I do in the con procedure. And I presented it to the largest body of plastic surgeons in Dubai uh, in 2023, which is the Icoplast International Conference of Plastic Surgeons. 
and I shared my data, how many of my patients ended up getting uh, the seroma, how many of them ended up getting the hematoma, how many of them ended up uh, improving. Um, and again, this is, remember, a surgeon's perspective, what I would call anecdotal. This is where I said that the surgery can be done safely, definitively, and with confidence, uh, and that the mindset of the surgeon has to be there. Uh, the general consensus across is, well, the surgery is hard, the capsules will get dissolved, the capsules add volume, the capsules are not hurting, like this patient from this morning, the her plastic surgeon said, so what, you have a ruptured implant very likely, it doesn't matter. And I've heard this many times from the many other surgeons, well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, let it be. And I'll say the answer and the safe answer is, if someone has a ruptured implant, you need to get that silicone out because it's not helping your state of health. And you know from the many ladies who are hurting from the silicone toxicity, silicone granuloma, the reaction with the lymph nodes. It hurts uh, very much. Yeah, yeah, it hurts, yeah. Now some more, some less. The fact that the implants are not meant to be in the body forever tells us a lot of information that the implants are associated with hurt. If I may, again, go back to this mentor advertisement out of the journal that we read, and I'm gonna read two paragraphs and then I will let you talk. Because what I'm trying to do here is, we have a lot of information that we have gathered from you alone, and we have learned a lot. And all what I have said, again, is not my opinion, but the hard facts. This is, again, to be complete on the safe side. So patients, and I'm gonna read this, Patients receiving breast implants have reported a variety of systemic symptoms such as joint pain, muscle aches, confusion, chronic fatigue, autoimmune diseases, yeah. and others. Individual patient risk for developing these symptoms has not been well established, period. Some patients report complete resolution of symptoms when the implants are removed without replacement. So that means breast implant illness exists. Yeah. And if you remove the implants, now one thing that I would add is I wish they mentioned capsule removal because that yeah. in the years to come will prove that is a better and more complete and more refined surgery so that we don't have to be ending up in your situation. Now will everyone end up in where you are if they did not get the proper explant? I will say from my experience, why take that chance? And this is where in my practice, I remove the whole capsule because I find, and time will prove it, yeah. that the total capsule and inflamed tissue must be removed along with the implant, preferably in the end block method or a total capsulectomy. The other thing I just want to mention now, this is from Mentor. I want to go ahead and, this is Natrel. Uh, this is the other allergen, the other very common, uh, the, the most common manufacturer. And I'm going to read right here verbatim, quote, Possible adverse events include implant rupture with silicone-filled implants, comma, implant deflation with saline-filled implants, comma, capsular contracture, reoperation, implant removal, pain, changes in nipple and breast sensation, infection. If I'm young, if I'm a lady, I'm running away already. Uh, scarring, asymmetry, wrinkling, implant displacement, uh, displacement, migration, implant palpability, Visibility, breastfeeding complications, hematoma, seroma, implant extrusion, necrosis, delayed wound healing, infection, breast tissue atrophy, chest wall deformity, calcium deposits, lymph adenopathy. Now I'll tell you what else remains. And look, we mentioned the word BILCL. So the take home message here is what? Do no harm. You have a wonderful, nice 36 year old lady, mom of two, uh, kids, teacher, you know, I like what you tell your... Uh, what I said? Yeah, what you, you said. Know, I, yeah, I, I told him, um, you know, I'm not here to make anything up. So, like, I'm teaching people, like, to be honest, always. So, my story is so honest. It's really from the heart. I'm not here to make anything up, like, really. Um, I, am, I am here, basically, to heal from that. My story is really unbelievable because it was like a hard road to walk, um, but I'm still very confident about it. And um, I am just another testimonial of like this really exists. And like it really 
has to stop like harming people. Um, I'm really concerned about the dark number because there must be like a really big dark number of people not knowing what they're suffering, uh, women not knowing what they're suffering from, not being treated, uh, being gaslit. It's a really hard road, you know? Um, so yeah, I think we have to uh, like invest a little bit in further uh, research for having tests. I know that there exists that there are tests existing. I know one doctor in Germany he does that. Like he takes one piece of your implant and he can measure like he can show in your blood a reaction. So uh, some kind of immune reaction. So tests do exist, um, and I think um, it would help a lot of women. Like uh, maybe also like doing prior tests. I know that they exist in the dental field already, so probably it would save a um, few like, uh, yeah, harmed women so for from my, that reaction. From my experience, there is no lab test, no definitive imaging test uh, that exists that says, well, you have BII. Yeah. It's more a correlation of the symptoms of breast implant unless young lady like you with all the problems that come with the brain fog, fatigue, joint pain problems, chest pain, discomfort, you know, every bump that you had on the car ride that gets amplified. All of that, after the fact that you've already seen the neurologist, the endocrinologist, the OBGYN, and your primary care doctor, and all the tests yield that you don't have MS, multiple sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, lupus, uh, Lyme disease, you don't have hypothyroidism, for example, adrenal function is good, then more and more fingers point because, you know, the data is here. The data is here. These are not my opinions. I have said nothing today that is not consistent with the logical thought process of doing no harm. And this is where I, if one listens to what you have said with the open heart and non-bias, you will only be convinced that they are not worth it. Now let me ask you this, you're literally uh, f uh, f uh, you know, 42 hours out from yeah. your surgery, uh, less than two days. How was your pain post-op? Oh my God, um, well I was like, well, how was I like uh, on a four or five mile? Yeah. That was the maximum, so I think all the ladies can relate that the BII is way worse than the post-operative uh, yeah. <laughs> post pain. Um, and I'm already done uh, down 30% I think of my symptoms which is really cool I feel I can breathe again like um, you know that chest pain it's not so it's not prominent like anymore um, there was something like sitting on my breast I always felt like I had those implants still in so that's all gone and I'm really looking forward for all the like new like improvements sure. I'm going to discover. Yeah. No, I want to mention this, you know, 100% there is a placebo effect going on. I know this because I'm a physician and I want to be, it is always good to hear from you immediate post-op. Because you remember, like you said, you have nothing to gain except for your good health yeah. and the health of the many other ladies. You and I have no quote obligation. I guess you are my patient. We want to hear from you one week out. You know, one of the ladies mentioned sometimes when you post a post up day six video, it might be too soon. I agree with that patient completely and with the many other ladies, yes. But it is important to note that as the patients are driving home, they can see clear that they have resolution of their back pain. We want to hear from you immediate and we want to continue to hear from you because there is certainly, you know, what if you're on the pain medications? What if this is a better, you know, water, if you will, just to be sarcastic. There is a placebo effect in this. We want to hear from you one month out, three months out, six months out. Now, when you hear story after story, look, it says drastically improved symptoms, and this was followed six months out at least in their study. And again, if you look at the, Every study has its drawbacks, but this is again, uh, I will end on my part. 
how many ladies who have explanted majority of them will say two things if not all they wish they had not gotten implants and number two they wish they had gotten them out sooner and so this is where from my experience that and my practice that you will benefit from what I offered you there's always in my mind look you've already undergone two capsule removals yeah. what is it that and these are nice doctors in Germany but when you become a plastic surgeon that is a very competitive field and you have to be really good and you have to be smarter than the smartest if you will when it comes to practicing now you could be that as a cardiologist you could be that as a physicist and no matter what you do but this is where we are raising the standard and we are saying we can do better look in conclusion we are at the side effects on my end the implants have been banned before and this is the take-home message these cohesive gummy bear implants are not safe and they caused the same hurt as the silicon implants in 1992 that led to the ban and in the 80s and that saline implants caused the same hurt that silicon implants i cannot differentiate that one patient who walks in with saline if i listen to her symptoms and say well you got saline you got symptoms you got the same set of problems same suicidal ideation same joint pain neck and back pain problems fibromyalgia all these symptoms some less some more another lady two weeks ago and i did a post she came to me and she has no symptoms of breast implant illness and i asked her why are you removing the implants and she said you said they last anywhere from 10 to 15 and i am my, my 12 yeah. year mark so i feel like i need to get them out and i might as well get them out now so i don't have to worry about it rupturing and lo and behold she had a rupture on the left side oh, wow. she had a rupture and she was laughing and wow. she was in a state of anger as she was laughing but her mind knew more yeah. than what her heart yeah. and what the system would say and this is again going and attesting to the point these are not my stories these are real life patients you have Danica Kirkpatrick who will say something you are as important as her the celebrities will transition or raise awareness mm -hmm. but you are that person just like every person who will raise the awareness who will bring to light that implants are not the safety profile features that what is portrayed in reality be in my practice i want to mention to the many ladies to educate, to learn, yeah. get informed consent from your story, from your experience. They're really, really toxic, really toxic. My friend Cecily, who's with me uh, here during my stay, um, she's taking care of me. She already recovered. Uh, she was sitting in a wheelchair for like seven years, you know, um, just because of a ruptured implant. So um, I think those stories are really proof. And we have also like uh, biopsies done like showing showing silicone goes to your nerves i had already four blood washes done back in germany um, showing high levels of silicone in my blood i mean that is proof that those um, implants are not inert so uh, really they are really really toxic and the, getting them was the biggest mistake of my whole life it really was and yeah, so um, I would not recommend getting them to anyone out there. Um, and what I think uh, we all been through, um, all this pain, like all of these really, really debilitating symptoms, like really compromising your daily life to the point where you're just bedridden. Um, Taking that with grace is a really hard job, you know, smiling and just like being s s strong, like um, it's really a hard job if you probably can't breathe or just like, like you cannot do a normal grocery shop because you're so brain fogged. It's all not worth it. And um, I'm, 
I really want uh, people to know that this damage is really realistic and um, that on the other hand the right treatment is so 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 important and necessary to get better sure. well, thank you very much you. i appreciate you sharing thank your you journey uh, we will continue to hear from you um, i want to thank uh, your uh, friend cecily who's here she's been there from the beginning to the end from the time we connected in germany and especially uh, when we're here and I'm going to actually, right after this, I'm going to interview with her. She's going to ask me all the questions, and I will answer them to the best of my ability. Thank you very Thank much. You so Thank much. you. Bye Thanks. Bye-bye.